The first thing you'll notice is uh, the outside was red there for a second and now we've got a waiting for GPS signal. That's just normal. Um, we, uh, of course, the program relies upon the strength of the GPS antenna, so sometimes you'll have better signal than others. You can you can select what you want it to show. So uh, you know, here we're going to pick uh, we'll pick speed, and you can choose your units as well. So I'll go with miles per hour. So this gives us a readout of uh, our speed and you can always see your accuracy. It's generally going to look like the same thing. You want that to be a low number. Um, if you want to reset anything like your... Uh, let's see, let's go to... Let's change this to our trip time. That's going to be a countdown from the last time that you reset it. And so if we go to the reset tab you can re reset a number of these uh, values individually, or you can just reset them all. And let's do that. And then if you go back to the odometer, you can see that now it's tracking as of when I set it. So let's move to the next tab, tracks. Uh, tracks are something where it will record your position, and it keeps them stored on the phone until you publish them. So as far as steps goes, we would publish our track and then you email, you can email the published track and that gets set as a, that gets sent as a Google Maps or Google Earth, can be viewed in either of those. Uh, if we go to Quick View, you see it shows us a map of uh, the track of where we've gone, it also shows us our waypoints. So if you click on an individual waypoint, it will show you it and waypoints are just bookmarks of places that you've been and so you can, if you view on map it will launch in in the regular uh, maps application uh, so let's go back to our current track let's go back again and waypoints is the next tab so let's go there and you can see that it is dynamically updating the distance that we are away from each of these uh, waypoints. Let's put it uh, it's something that's going to change a little bit more. Say feet. And now it's showing me in real time how close I am to each of those saved waypoints. So if we want to create another waypoint, um, then I can type a new name for it. Uh, it's kind of hard to do while I'm moving around in the car with one thumb and filming. But just say nothing. Say save. Now you see these uh, the waypoints are shown to you in the order of proximity, so how close they are. So nothing is at the top of the list, and since I'm in a moving car right now, it, you can see that it's incrementing. We did a U-turn, so now we're actually uh, getting closer to where I set that waypoint. But if I say quick view, then it shows me all my waypoints. And I'm quite a ways away now from where I was before, so here's this waypoint. Click on it, and it is... there we go. That's our waypoint that we just created. So that's fairly simple, hopefully, and if you want to email all your waypoints, you touch that button, and it will send it to... just launch you in your email application. However, it, it will ask you it will notify you that it will have to, because there's no way we can attach the points into your email, it uploads onto a server, and from there, your email uh, is just a link to the file on the server. So if you say OK, it uploads the file, and then it launches you off into your mail application. And then this is just the typical, typical mail from here. So. Let's cancel this. So in the uh, in the tracks, if you want to reset, yeah, it says we have 301 points in our current track. So let's reset that. Uh, I didn't get it. There we go. 
it gives you a warning. So now we have zero points in the track. Uh, the points get recorded every couple seconds and or every so many feet uh, or a little bit uh, distance. So if you're not moving, it shouldn't record any points. So let's turn it on. Let's so as you're moving and as uh, through time, it will record points and then since those are recorded into memory, then you can do a quick view, see your track. So I just barely started recording and we just took a turn. Now since it doesn't dynamically update, you may want to jump back and forth a little bit if you want to take another view at your track. So now we're up to 11 points. So at this point, if I wanted to email this to someone, I first need to publish it. And it's saying it's going to discard my previous tracks. You can only have one published at a time. So uh, you can go and download that file once you get the email link if you want to save it for later. First thing it will do is upload the file. And then once it's ready, uh, then I can email the published track. It jumps to Google or jumps to my mail application and you can see that it has a link for the Google Earth file and a link to view it in Google Maps. If you go to the Google Earth file, it will actually download a KML file which you can save on your own computer for as long as you want. So the info tab just shows us uh, troubleshooting and just some general information uh, if you do run into some problems you think you have some weird problem then uh, you can type in a return email here in your message and this will just get sent right to us we try to respond quickly and solve problems a lot of the times the problems have to do with the uh, iPhone and iTunes and we don't really have a lot of control over it but we will do our best that's it. Hope you enjoy GPS Kit. Thanks.